Hi, this is Deborah Baxter and this is mini lecture 18 on Cornell Notes. Proper note taking is important for just about any class, course, or training you take in your life, but it is absolutely vital for college. But is there a way to take notes in college level courses that is better than all of the others? Well, if you ask me, someone who has been teaching in higher ed for many years, the answer is an overwhelming yes. First, I'd like to talk about the ways that you may be taking notes now. For example, there is the outline method, which is seen here. And I would have to say that this is the way I see most students taking notes. This is a decent way to take notes, but it's not perfect. Why? because it requires you to review everything that you've written to find out what you do and do not know. Not necessarily a completely efficient way to study. Okay, so here we have the mind map technique of note taking. Again, it's not a bad method, but it's not great for high school or college students to use. Why? because you have to review everything and it's difficult from these notes to ascertain what you need to study and what you already know. You're looking over everything. And this is what you call the flow method of note taking. It consists of visual images to help you remember what certain lectures or classes were about. However, this isn't a great method either because, as you guessed, you have to review everything in order to find out what you know and what you need to study. The flow method is also called visual note taking and here's a great example of it. But yes, you would need to go through all of the photos to try to recreate what happened in class and it really wouldn't help you test what you do and do not know. And one final note taking form that I'd like to talk about is what is called write on the slides, which is exactly as it sounds. The teacher or professor kindly shares his or her PowerPoint or Google slides with the class beforehand. You print them off, you bring them to class, and then you take notes next to the slide that he or she is presenting. This is a decent way to take notes, but again, Maybe not the best way for reviewing afterwards, as there is no way to test what you did and did not grasp from the lecture. You're basically reviewing everything. Are you starting to see some pattern here? Okay, so basically I've talked about all of these great note-taking methods and why you should not use them. And why should you not use them? Because they do not give you the option to test yourself to see what you really know. And if your notes can't help you do that, then you are wasting precious time reviewing information that you already know. And guess what? You can't do that once you hit college. You won't have the time. You will need to concentrate on what you do not know well and not waste time on reviewing what information you have already grasped. So in comes the Cornell note taking system. I, for one, am a huge fan. There are three parts to this the Q or question column, the note taking area, which is the outline method, we'll talk about that more later, and the summary area at the bottom. Okay, so let's talk step by step on how to create this Cornell note taking system for yourself. First, draw a dark horizontal line a little more than one quarter of the paper length from the bottom going to highlight this area with a magic marker or a highlighter just to make sure that it's clear. This will be your summary area at the bottom. Then you will draw a dark vertical line about two inches from the left side of the paper from the top to the horizontal line which will be on the left side your question and cue area on your right side your note taking area. Second, at the top of each page, you're going to write down the course name and the date. Number three is the large box on the right is for writing notes, which we just talked about. And then you are not going to write down complete sentences. Never do that. Waste of time. Use abbreviations and bullet points if possible. And always skip a line between ideas and topics. Number four is review the notes as soon as possible after each class 
and you're going to pull out the main ideas, key points, dates, and people and write these in the left column. If possible, try to do this during class time. It is very difficult to do this after class. You're very busy. It's best to just stay in class for one or two minutes after class is over and fill in that left side of the page. It will help you tremendously later on. Number five, you're going to write a summary of the main ideas in the bottom section. One sentence only is just fine. You do not need to write a paragraph. And number six, you are going to quickly reread your notes in the right column, just skimming them very quickly. But then you will spend most of your time studying the ideas in the left column and the summary at the bottom. These are the most important ideas and will probably include most of the information that you will be tested on. Okay, so let's review this one more time. You'll have your heading at the top. You will have your questions and cues on the left-hand side. You will have your notes in an outline form on the right-hand side, and you will have your summary at the bottom. Okay, so remember earlier when we were talking about the outline method of taking notes and how most people use this format? This actually isn't a bad way to take notes. It's actually really good. It just doesn't help you study. That's where Cornell Notes comes into play. Cornell uses these notes and uses them over in the note taking area on the right side of the paper. So with Cornell Notes you have the best of both worlds. You have the outline that you have become so used to using and you have a way to review to really get to know the information and to study and test yourself. There are many different ways that you can use Cornell Notes. I personally hand out sheets like this one in my classes and ask my students to take notes on these. If you do a Google search, you might be quite surprised at how many different kinds of Cornell note-taking forms you can download. Some students use their own spiral notebooks, but no matter what form you use, the general format will be the same. Okay, so review what needs to go on the left side which again is the question or cue side, are the key terms, any specific examples, any questions that the instructor poses in class, and any anticipated question that you believe the professor might ask on the next test. On the note side, you can include any definitions of key terms, diagrams, detailed examples, flow charts, main points, pictures and drawings, answers to any questions posed and detailed explanations to those answers. And here is why the Cornell note-taking system is so great. When it comes time to study, you cover up the note side with all of the definitions, answers, explanations, etc. and focus solely on the question or cue side. If you can answer that question with certainty, or if you know the def definition to any key term, you do not even need to reveal the other half of the paper. The goal is to learn and know the information. Once you have it down, you do not need to review the other side. It's a waste of time. Move on to the areas that need your attention. Folding the sheet in half so that you can view the question or cue side and to hide the note side is another way to review the information to see what you remember and what you might need more work on. The following two slides are a couple of great examples of students using the Cornell Note System. Notice the great use of diagrams on this one and how this student can easily go back and review the key terms from the lecture. This student has a lot of information on her notes side, but it really comes down to two key questions. If this student can answer both of these questions on the left side without looking on the right hand side, then she does not need to study the right hand side. Color coding your notes is a great idea as well. For example, with my own notes, when I review them, I will highlight items that I know very well in green, items that I know but don't feel 100% comfortable with in yellow, 
items that I know a little bit about but need to review in pink, and items I don't remember at all in orange. So when I go back to review, which items do you think I will study first? Yes, the orange. Five minutes before a testing class, am I going to review all of my notes, or am I going to go back and review the pink and orange? You know the answer to that. I'm focusing my energy on the information that needs it and not wasting it on the topic areas highlighted in green. And as a reminder, it is always a good idea to utilize lists of symbols and abbreviations that you can use in your note taking. And for those of you who are adamant about taking notes in class only on your computer, you too can use the Cornell note taking system. You can either create your own template or use this one that I will gladly share with the class. Now you have no excuse not to use it. And guess what? In my over 25 years of teaching, I have never had one student that I know of that went back to their old way of taking notes after using the Cornell note taking method. It works. And the best part is you will drastically reduce your study time by not studying things you already know. It sounds so simple, right? <laughs>